Yo guys, what's up anyway? It's your boy Feisty Orange here, and today we are fighting good old Harry Abbott. So I writ, uh, wrote down, sorry, wrote, not writ, wrote down all this stuff so we got everything that we need to know for this matchup because I'm playing a fatigue style of a privateer. This is really important to note because the fatigue type of style of a privateer is extremely important in the matchup. Uh, so we're going to bring Contessa. Crud, did I give her? Oh, wait. Okay, well, pretty sure I'm smart enough to know that Contessa has a uh, first check there. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. No, it's fine. What now? So we're fine. So we got Contessa here, which is very important in this matchup because of the Black Fog. Uh, so that's really all I was worried about. Um, but luckily I was smart enough to figure out that you give her first strike three. Um, I didn't give her a Relentless one because I was like, it's kind of useless having a Relent one on her because she already has repost. Um, so yeah. Other than that, um, I don't think there's really any issue. He's going to use Black Fog, which means that we're just going to go straight into uh, Contessa's Gallant Defense, which is really the main point, and we are just going to plan our route from there. So, there we go. So, easy solution. We're going to Fort, Gallant Defense, Summon. And this is fine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Can't reach me with anyone besides this pirate. So with that, we will just stay here. Uh, I just need to make sure everyone can move. Nice in that case, we are good to go. So we place you there. Actually, no, we place you here to limit movement. Oh, my fault, my fault, my fault. What my fault, you moved there. Yep. Okay, so everything went according to plan, so we're gonna cut out one fort. So we're down to three. So we did our job here. Now, the reason I made this play is because um, only Scratch currently can be reached by his pirate with uh, Vicious, even though he doesn't have it. But just, like, you got to play around that. Good practice to play around that. So um, the entirety of the idea is that this can't one, two, three, four. Yeah, so it can only go up to here. So even it can only reach Contessa, who has first strike three, which removes all their hiddens. And has, you know, just pretty much everything to answer it. So the entirety of this idea is just we're going to be able to stop our opponent from doing anything. Um, so Zora used Black Fog, so we can just kind of cut that out. We're good to go because of how Gallant Defense works. Um, it can't be purged. And uh, our, if our pet shows, we also have that situation in hand. So now we're just going to move all the way over here. And just... Uh, Yes, we wasted our mojo flow, I understand that, but we obviously couldn't tell if he was going to use right away his um, Black Fog. He could have waited, considering that he had Contessa. Because the easiest way to play around Contessa <laughs> is straightforward. It's simply just to use um, your Black Fog how it used to be before they changed how hide work. So, yeah. It was a pretty easy solution to get around her, which is just using it when you go in for the attack, so she never gets a chance to use it preemptive, preempti preemptively. So that's really the main course there. So we're down to three forts. No, my fault. We actually had five because I forgot that I had to change my gear. So we're actually up to four. We have one big guns left, 
which is good to know. We still have three revives, two, uh, we have a rally and a rouse, regroup and refresh, absorb shield, two hides, um, and we have 124 dodge, which is good to note. So he's going to play very defensively here, which is fine by us, because pretty much if we survive the fog, we survive the main attack, which means that we're probably good to go. We also get a lot of options with Boon Nazika in the future if we make this type of route of play, so I'm pretty happy with what we decided to go with. So, um, one, two, three, four, he can only move up here. Um, we are going to simply start by... Well, we can't actually do that because of the, the stuff here. So we're actually going to pass on our character. We're just going to have uh, you use that and you attack. And we're going to go and say that's nice. You, you got backstab still, right? Nice. Um, so that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And the next turn, if these guys actually decide to move now that we're killing this unit, we can play the scorpions or we can bomb or something. So we still get a lot of options, and we still have free turns as long as the Scallant Defense is up. So that is the main course. That is the main idea, the main goal of this strategy is to set up enough to where we can start applying the pressure that we want. So, um, that's pretty nice. And we know Harry has a total of 157 dodge, 319 damage, and 274 spell power with uh, 35 armor and 10 magical resistance, two forts, one revive, and two rouses, a kraken's laminate, three assassins, persian dispel, tide slash elu two, and blade one, which should be on there. Yeah, nice. Um, two walk in darknesses that, uh, and two mid, mid poisons. So that's the uh, assassin's gloom, I believe. So we're going to see Shadow Dance come up. That's really nice, so that's good to note down. So already has Shadow Dance. Um, uh, Will Ack. Good to note that all these have been used. So we actually have an opening, so we'll summon these, and we'll just kind of say go. Um, we still have two turns of guarding, which is really all I want. We'll probably try to kill my pet next turn. Hmm. I feel like I should have brought Bonnie instead of Scratch. Ah. I feel like I should have. So it depends what he does here. Hmm. Very nice placement on his part. Make it so no matter where I go with my Nazika, he can reach it with his fan. Luckily, we survived the fog, which is the main issue. And since we're at full health, five turns in, have everything set up, we're looking in a good position where we can start to time out our opponent. Fans used for Shadow. GS. Gornado moved up. Wow, okay. So that means... Does Gallant Defense on my turn or their turn? Because that's huge. Yes. Hmm. I'm going to assume yes. that it ends on their turn. Uh, playing around that very nicely. We're just going to use this here. And he can't actually, like, there's a pretty low chance that he will kill my Nausicaa from full health. So I'm going to actually, but he could go for Scratch, which is why I'm going to use that there. Forcing him to go for the Nausicaa, and if he does not kill, he gets punished. Um, we get a Mega, which is nice. 
Not going to bring him to tide either, so that's really good. We're actually going to cut off our big guns here, so we have no more big guns. Um, I, I use that because in the situation that Scratch is the target, we obviously want to get full value from him. Dang you. How could you miss Zo? <laughs> okay, luckily no chain went on. He may decide to prioritize the pet instead, and in that case, we actually are going to be looking really good. Uh, we can use one more fort before we have to save the rest, and then we just ha we just have to survive his hiddens, and we win the match, which means that we need to prioritize having two, and then we can live all three assassins, and we win the game. Uh, so that's the goal. That's the overall goal of the strategy, is to outlast everything that he has, and then kill him through Shroud. Um, because he only has, he does have Turn of the Tide 2, but obviously the Called Arms will eventually end out by the time we get into a situation where I need to outlast him on everything, which is why I'm very glad. Like, it, I feel like he has the right idea. Um, he's gonna revive his, uh, you know, put a Rouse on his Goro, so we're gonna actually cut out a Rouse. So we're down to one Rouse. So he is going for the pet, or no, the summon, and we are actually going to fort and use walk in darkness because we can always race. Um, so the idea here is we are going to set up the best offensive push. If he doesn't walk for his only move is to walk forward and just accept the pressure. And just say, well, if you're going to pressure me, I'm going to pressure your pirate. Which is really the only option that he has. Um, but obviously our best play around that would just be zeal. So in that case, we just zeal. So we have a lot of follow-up plays. The minions are also starting to chip in damage, which is why I may think about doing Zeal first instead. It could also help with the Contessa. It's a Venge Goro. For, so that's going to be really good for Contessa with Zeal, so I may just use Zeal first instead. Um, so he still has two more hides that he can use. So I can say I'll put two each. L. Um, we've used another fort, so we have three, so we can't use any more forts unless it's absolutely certain. Um, that's that's a thing. We can use our shield. That's a thing. So he's going to end up moving back, going to get cheap shotted a lot, which is really good for us. Obviously, the minions are just there to chip in damage, and it's there... A lot of people ask me, you know, Jeremy, why why do you use scorpions instead of, like, what's the point of picking scorpions over trees and, you know, using scorpions but no banner? Um, the main reason I use no banner with scorpions is because the scorpions are just there because staff, I think, is better for private because repel quarters really screws them over in a lot of situations. So, uh, he's going to end up moving back with Goro. So I'm actually going to use this chance to, to argue the zeal. I feel it's it's worth zealing. Yes, Captain. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, if we move here, his pirate cannot reach us normally, but we can reach. No, no, no. Right here, we can argue. Right. In the best situation, yeah. That right here, we move, and right here, and we zeal. This way they don't miss, and Gora will miss them. Okay, that's the best possible move. Um, and I'll use Focus Fire instead of Boon, and then I'll move Nazika back. Hmm, or maybe, maybe it was better to go Boon and then Zeal. I, mean, I just want to keep this pet alive so he can't go hide. But we can focus fire on uh, Goro. Or we could focus on Wu Tang. Maybe Wu Tang's the better option. I think he is actually. Wow, Goro did not actually miss. 
So we may focus on Wu Tang depending on the situation. We just used our zeal, so we have no more zeal. So we'll write that down. What else can he do? There's quite a lot that he could still do here. Uh, we got. He still has his forts. He still has. He has one. One rounds. This is good that he's using his heals early on. Uh, one Kraken slam it. Three assassins. Virgin spell. He killed my pet, so he's probably gonna go hit in the following turn. Uh, he's using Cloud Spirit. Okay. So since he used it on Wu Tang, I don't think it's good to send Nazika on him. Instead, we can send him on to Goronado. We'll actually use Focus Fire here, and we'll move you forward. And we'll send you to Super Strike Gornado. We can send uh, Scratch up at this point. Force him to use uh, Wu Tang's heal on Gornado right now. Nice, we got lucky with that. Nice. Come on. Oh, baby. Oh, come on. One one unit, one unit. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. There we go. Goro's down. That's huge. That's a massive swing. Oh, my lord. That, that's going to put us ahead so much right now. That's, that's great. So that was really lucky on our part. But, I mean, we took our best chances. That was the most, that was the highest percentage of getting a massive tempo swing. So Goro is down now, which is huge. Like, I cannot emphasize how huge that is. That's a lot of damage he just lost. He got no value from his Goronado, which is what matters in this matchup, having that tempo swing. Uh, so being able to push as a privateer with this strategy is huge, huge momentum. Uh, we have Zeal up still, so the chance we have a pretty good chance of doing a lot of crazy shenanigans. Wu Tang is really low right now, so we can probably pick up a KO on him next turn if things work out. We can focus down two units. We have a lot going on for us. We can probably save the Mega Strike on our Nazika and retreat at that point and regroup, and obviously we will just outlast him at that point. We still have another turn of our Zeal left. Two turns, actually. Wow, that's cute. That's great. Uh, and we still have three turns on our four. Guys, I cannot emphasize how amazing this is going for us right now. We are so far ahead, uh, and that is great. Let's just try to keep up this momentum. Um, and obviously, he takes a lot of damage by running around to try to hit our Nausicaa. So there's a lot of bad turns for him right now. Um, there's limited options. Him. So... His best hope is to be able to OKO this Nazika, maybe purge and just go for it. Uh, that's probably his best bet, but that's also not really the best bet uh, because he loses his 10 rounds. So, yeah. Let's see what happens here. He's ending up retreating here with his uh, fan. Nice, we got the miss on it. Just great. That's free 100 damage right there. I cannot emphasize how great that is. Uh, we're going to see just a pass on the Wu-Tang, not even a hit. Maybe that was a glitch, but that's how things go. Uh, I'm just going to have Contessa move right here and just go for the hit. I, I believe this OKOs anyway. Yeah, it does. So we're not even going to bother with Nazika. We're just going to start sending Nazika back. We'll start sending Scratch in, and we will simply just use Discipline to pretty much ensure at this point that we will be picking up the KO on Wu-Tang. Again, limit the value from all his minions. Um... So there we go. So he's dead now. So we can. So we're done with Wu Tang. Um, we've used dis. Discipline. Um, no more Wu Tang. He's used one hide, so we can put down one hide left. Um, Which is great, meaning that he only has one more hide, and if we survive through that, we win the game. Like, in this situation right here, there really isn't much he can do. Uh, we've run quite a far away on Nazik. I believe he can't reach us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we are one off. He can reach Scratch, so maybe I should have moved Scratch right there. I don't really care about Scratch at this point. He's done his job, and um, there's really nothing else to be said at this point. I think we just win, so... 
Because we can time out his second hide with our own. Ending up moving forward. We still have Boone, so we'll save that. So let's count. I, I actually do not think there's a good way for him to deal with this. So we can actually move back here. It's one, two. Uh, we'll actually just move all the way back. And we'll move here. Because I really don't think there's anything that he can do to stop us. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, there's no way he can get that. So we'll just send Fan in there. Uh, we'll just have Scratch run back as well. We'll actually have Scratch move right here to block off his path. Uh, this way he has to do extra movement, which means that there's a 100% chance that he will not be able to reach us. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, can't reach us. So as long as we make this play right here, he cannot reach us with his pirate. Uh, we increase the highest chance that we'll be able to just do anything. And um, I was hoping that maybe we would get some value off Contessa, but she's done her job, so she can pretty much just die now and just try to suck up damage for us. Uh, which she's doing a pretty good job at trading with Fan, which is all I care about at this point. Scratch has done his job, so we can sack off him. He's just there to take extra damage. Now, Zika, we still want a round, though. Um, be nice. These first strikes also will help keep our minions alive. So, maybe Fan will die to these minions this turn, which would be absolutely amazing. Because uh, that would be all his units down. So, we have one more chance. Sadly, Fan is going to survive, but he's at, but she is out of heal range, so she'll probably just pick up the kill on Contessa and say go. So that's really nice. Uh, he can move enough to where we'll just hide at that point. Yeah, we'll just hide. Um, and uh, that'll be good for us. So he's going to move in a range. Yeah, that's as far as he can go. So we're going to see Fan just kill the... Kill Contessa here. Pretty straightforward. Straightforward turn. Uh, so, what I'm going to do here is a pretty interesting movement. I'm going to play like that, and I'm going to use my hide. Because he could just purge. Because uh, he has another two turns of walk in darkness. So we'll make this play right here. Now, this play is playing around poison, but it also means that no matter where he play, he, he has to place his unit right here if he wants to get the full chain on Nazika. And obviously, if he doesn't kill, he just loses. So that's the idea. And it also plays perfectly because if he places it there, then he won't be able to Witch Hunter Scratch. So um, it has its benefits and negatives depending on what he wants to do. Does he want to take the, the highest percentage chance of landing and killing Nazika with Bladestorm in mind? Or does he want to take the risky play with, you know, missing the kill on Nazika, risking Boone starting to get value when he doesn't have a fort on? He also doesn't have fort, so he has to take that into mind if he doesn't kill Nazika. What does he do then? Uh, and, you know, obviously if he moves there, then Scratch can get free hits on him, uh, possibly with you know no witch hunter in mind so that's this is this is huge so he's ending up doing the ford option which is a pretty pretty nice choice i i think i have to agree with that um so what i could do here is i could actually block off his path from getting to nazika by playing these here and then moving nazika right here now uh by moving nazika here right right because then he has to go one two three four five so i can move nazika here and block him off Then can he reach Nazika by going one, two, three, four, five? Yeah, he can. Okay, so we can't actually block him off. So in that case, we'll just go for the highest percent chance by shielding Nazika and just leaving Scratch there to die. Because we don't care about Scratch anymore. Scratch is just kind of bait. He's just kind of there to suck up damage and do his job, you know? Pretty straightforward. Not much else needed to be said. I definitely wish I... Uh, I, I definitely wish I brought Bonnie instead of Scratch, so that's definitely good to note in the future that Contessa, Bonnie, Nausicaa is the better choice. So he's ending up losing his, uh, one of his buffs here, his, um, 
forget which buff it is. It's his last turn of Call of Arms and Shadow Dance. Um, if Nazika doesn't die, we probably just win at that point. Um, he's going to get the epic. That's a lot of damage. Yep, and he gets punished because of his placement. Uh, misses as well, which was very lucky on our part. Very, very lucky. So now we have a couple of options here. Um, we could just sack off Nazika, actually. Or we could absorb her, which gives her some more life. Um... But then he could just purge. Uh, she survives another assassin. He's used one assassin, so I should note that down. So he's down to two. He's down to two assassins. I think this is the most value we're going to get out of Boone here. So I want to actually get the most value going. Uh, we can just do this. Uh, we may as well just do this at this point. And we're just going to go for the attacks. So this is the most value we are getting out of Boone. So I just want to, I just want to get it down while we're at it. Doesn't matter, he's already used his Blade Storm, so that's a thing to know. Whoa, totally forgot that Blade Storm is that monster. So there we go, that, it's whatever. Or was that Relentless? I couldn't see. Doesn't matter, I'm just trying to uh, get some damage in. Scratch can die. Um, so we're going to get off a lot of damage here right through his um, fort. No chain, that's fine, that makes sense. We got the double tap, which dealt a lot of damage. We went right through his health. That's all we're doing. We're just trying to outlast his HP at this point. Um, we're going to want to start to run in Fort, which is our goal. So I'm going to actually have Nausicaa run a different way from me after this, and I'm going to go run away because I only have two turns left of Walk in Darkness. So I can move here next turn. It's actually going to go for the assassin number two. So there we go. That's two assassins down. Uh, so it's down to one. And wow, Nazika! I'm just going to absorb her. I'm going to run you away. I'm going to move you here. We probably just won. <laughs> um, I don't think there's a way he can come back at this point. Uh, that that's definitely devastating. He's used two assassins. Um, he's super low HP. You know, Nausicaa's gonna get another crit. He's super low. And if she gets, uh, yeah, this is pretty much over. So yeah, that's gonna be GG. Uh, thanks for the match, Harry. Obviously, it didn't matter at that point. Um, after, <laughs> um, pretty much after you used the second assassin, you lost because there's really no way to come back with only one assassin and me so high at HP. Um, you had one more hidden. I still had three forts. Um, you had one more fort, and uh, I had like a load of heals, so I could have even tanked out your entire hidden assassin. So we're going to submit the score. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. If so, remember to leave a big thumbs up. This was actually the first time showing Walker on a video outside of the, uh, you know, an actual PvP match. So hopefully you enjoyed. Stick around for more Central Ladders, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.